I, the peace of our blessed Lord be with you. Let's welcome ourselves to the evening of this day, Sunday, 17th March, 2024, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Gradually, we are coming to the end of this Lenten journey. The Paschal Feast is just at hand. Today, with the Greeks, we want to say that we want to see Jesus. But I want to indicate to you with what we can see Jesus. Only with new hearts can we see Jesus. Dearly beloved, like the Greeks then, we need new hearts. God is writing on our hearts as he wrote on the hearts of his people of old. We want to listen once again to the Gospel of today, John 12, 20 to 33. Now there were some Greeks among those who went out to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. So they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Then Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of weed falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it. While anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said, it attended. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends in Christ. The hour has come. It is very close. That is why we see the, Jew, the Greeks at Jerusalem. The presence of the Greeks at Jerusalem for Christ signifies that his moment has come. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And when I am lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. These Greeks who are the festival, they saw Christ. But what they wanted to see was a new kind of vision. They wanted to see Christ with their heart. There's a vision that only human hearts can see. We know that the, 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 the sense which God has created for sin are our eyes. But we also know that the human heart can also see. It's only when God has written on our hearts, giving us new hearts, that we can see Jesus. Beloved, the moment has come for us with these new hearts to acknowledge Christ, to see him, to be with him as this first God feast, as the Jews present themselves in Jerusalem. With these words, I will now bring you to the first reading of today. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 to 33. This is what God says. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write it on their hearts. God is writing his words on the hearts of his people. And when he has, done, he has done that, no longer would they teach their neighbor to say to one another, know the Lord, because all who know the Lord, they will acknowledge him from the least to the greatest. God will forgive their wickedness and will not remember their sins again. For me, the writing of God's law, his words on their hearts signifies these things. First, as a sign of forgiveness. When the heart is still clothed with sin and you write on it, you can't see the writer. So God writing on the heart of his people is a sign, a clear sign of he forgiving these people. He says this, I'll forgive their wickedness and I don't remember them anymore. He wipes their hearts and writes on their hearts. Two, the reason why he writes on their hearts is to make them conscious of their sonship. 
their calling, their vocation as people of the alliance. Israel is not like any other nation. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. There is no nation under the earth that heard the voice of God and lived that you people heard. But Israel is not conscious of his sonship. So Israel is behaving like any other nation. God is writing on his heart so that Israel can listen to the one who has brought him this far. God is writing on their heart so that they can acknowledge his deeds, all the miracles great deeds he has performed till now. God is writing on their heart so that they can be joyful, they can acclaim and sing his praises. Dearly beloved, for us as a people who listen to these readings this year, 2024, the Lent season, the Lenten season of this year, we need the same writing on our hearts as a visible sign of God's forgiveness. Those of us who say, God has not pardoned me, God does not forgive me, we need this experience. We need the writing on our hearts to make us conscious of our calling, that there is a pact and an alliance between us and God, so that we don't turn back to follow idols, all these things that have been thrown to us these days. We need God to write again on our hearts so that we can listen, listen, listen to his word. We need God to write on our hearts again so that we can acknowledge all the great works he performs daily in our lives. We need God to write on our hearts so that we can be joyful and acclaim and sing his praises. And finally, I think we need God to write on our hearts so that like the Greeks, we can declare, Lord Jesus, we would like to see you. Because we, it is only with new hearts, hearts that have had God written writing on them, that we can see Jesus. The hour has come, and it is now that we need hearts that have the words of God written on them so that we can see Christ, not with our visible eyes, but with our hearts. Having as inscription the words of the Lord, the peace of our blessed Lord be with you. Stay blessed. Amen.